Praise the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and grace and peace to everybody viewing Bible Christians here on YouTube. We're going to deal with one of the Lord's holy days right now in this lesson. And the title of this lesson is called The Feast of Tabernacles, The End Gathering. The Feast of Tabernacles, The End Gathering. Because here we're Bible Christians. And what a Bible Christian is, is a, a Christian like Christ who keep the days outlined in the Holy Bible. You know, we don't deal with the days that man um, came up with as far as Easter and Christmas. Even though you may think they have a religious connection, those days actually have pagan background, but that's another lesson. That's right. But what we're going to deal with today, we're going to deal with the feast day that Jesus actually kept, which is the Feast of Tabernacles, as well as the other feasts. But we're going to deal with the Feast of Tabernacles. But just like the Lord's feast days, they all have great meaning and they point to something further in their end. And they're a shadow of good things to come. That's the right. Lord speaks to us through his feast days. Yes, just like on the Passover. The children of Israel killed that lamb on the Passover and shed the blood and got under the blood of the lamb. We all know that was pointing to Jesus. Because Jesus died on the Passover, shed his blood on the Passover. And if you want your sins to be passed over, you have to come under the blood of the lamb, which is the blood of Jesus. That's right. Just like the Feast of Pentecost. And the Lord put out his spirit on that very day. All these things are pointing to something much greater. And the Feast of Tabernacle, the last feast of the year, is pointing to something very much, much greater. And if that's done away with, our whole reward is done away with. Right. So that's what we're going to deal with today. We're going to deal with the Feast of Tabernacles, the end gathering. Because the Lord is going to gather his elect from all over the world. And he's going to set up shop in Jerusalem, and that's what we're looking forward to. And that's why we keep this feast day, and it's going to outline it in the Holy Scripture. So let's go ahead and start Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus chapter 23, we're going to start at verse 1. This is a chapter <clears throat> where the Lord outlined his holy days. When you get there, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord. Now we all know this is the feast of the Lord. And we know that the Lord gave it to the Jews, or he gave it to Israel, so Israel can then in turn show it to the rest of the world. That's why Paul said, the Jew first, then the Gentiles. That's right. So it's, it's one Lord, one faith, one baptism ever since day one. The faith of Abraham, the faith of Moses, they all kept these feast days. Well, Moses, that he, um, Moses did, and the people thereafter. But they all did it by faith. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord, which what? Which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation. Mm -hmm. Even these are my feasts. Uh -huh. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, uh -huh. and holy convocation. Uh -huh. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Okay, so this is a weekly feast day, and that's the Lord's Sabbath. So no matter where you dwell, the seventh day of the week is the day that's sanctified. And, this, and Bible Christians understand this. So every Sabbath day, or the day that we call Saturday, that's the day we have a holy convocation. That's the day we all come together to worship the Lord as commanded. That's done every week. But the Lord also has annual Sabbath days, and that's what we're going to deal with now. His annual, or his high Sabbaths, we're just talking about his feast days. The first one mentions is the Passover, then the Feast of Unleavened Bread, then Pentecost. And then after Pentecost, we have trumpets. Then after trumpets, we have Day of Atonement. And now we're going to deal with the feast day we're dealing with today, and that's the Feast of Tabernacles. Jump down to verse 33 and go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Now once again, who was talking, bro? The Lord. The Lord talking. He's talking to Moses. Moses didn't just sit down and say, Let me give these people something to do because they're driving me crazy. <laughs> He got this from the Lord, came That's from right. the Lord himself. This is the word of God. Yes, sir. And he said, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Go ahead. The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. And that's the day we're talking about right now, the Feast of Tabernacles. And you shall celebrate this feast for seven days. You shall feast for seven days. 35. On the first day shall be in holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. Right. So on the first day you shall have a holy convocation, and you shall do no servile work therein. Jump down to verse 39 and go ahead. Also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. All right, so this will be the day if you want to have a thanksgiving for everything the Lord has gave you. 
this would be the perfect day to do it. Right. Because at verse 39, it says, also on the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, because that means something. So when you gather in all the fruit of the land around the time of this feast time, then you're supposed to celebrate this feast. So you don't need the month, the, the, the last Thursday in November to do this. The Lord already gave you a day to do this. And that's during the feast of end gathering when you gather everything at the end. And why is it at the end? Because it's pointing to something greater because the Lord is speaking through us through his feast days. So also in the 15th day of the seventh month when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto the Lord. How long? Go ahead. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. So on the first day you should have a holy convocation, and then at the eighth day you should have a holy convocation, but you shall feast seven days. This is the feast we're going to talk about today. Let's go to Exodus chapter 23. Exodus 23, and we're going to read verses 14 through 17. Exodus chapter 23, verses 14 through 17. Brother, when you get there, go ahead. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. All right, it was three times a year that the children of Israel and also those who followed the children of Israel or who was a part of Israel, spiritually as well as physically, because when they came out of the land of Egypt, they came out of mixed multitude. So when the Lord gave this commandment unto Moses, he was talking to the children of Israel, but remember, it was a mixed multitude. So three times a year shall you keep a feast or you're supposed to go to a place where the Lord chose his name to be. And we know that was Jerusalem. Three times a year you had to appear into Jerusalem. And what feasts were they? Those. Verse 15. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Now that happened in the springtime around the end of March, beginning of April. Sometimes depending on the lunar calendar. Around the day that man celebrate Easter. Around that same time. So that's the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Passover Feast of Unleavened Bread. Go ahead. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days, as I commanded thee, in the time appointed of the month of B. Uh-huh. For in it thou camest out from Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. What about the next feast? Go ahead. And the Feast of Harvest, the first fruits of thy labors. Which, which another name is Pentecost. If you read Acts chapter 2, it says it was Jews from, devout Jews from every nation came to Jerusalem to do what? Keep the Feast of Pentecost. It was only Jews there. Gentiles wasn't there. As a matter of fact, Gentiles never kept the Feast of Pentecost on their own. Nope. Only the ones that dedicated them to themselves to the true and living God. But it said Jews from the vow under every country, Arab, every country, came to Jerusalem to keep the feast. This is why. So it said in, in verse 16, and the Feast of Harvest or the Feast of Pentecost, the what? which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering, mm -hmm. which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. So three times a year we were supposed to appear before the Lord, and that's the feast of unleavened bread or the Passover, the feast of harvest or first fruits or Pentecost, and the feast of ingathering or the feast of tabernacles. This, and we're talking about the feast of tabernacles today. Let's see if Jesus kept these feasts. Let's go to St. John chapter 7. Now remember, we know that the law was given unto Moses so for the children of Israel, who was a priest nation, to show the rest of the world. And keep in mind, when the Lord gave that law to Israel, it was a mixed multitude. It wasn't just Israel. Israel was a, the country, but it came out a mixed multitude. So the Lord was talking to everybody. Israel first, then everybody else, the Gentile next. So let's go to um, St. John chapter 7. We're going to start at verse 2. When you get there, go ahead. Now the Jews' Feast of Tabernacles was at hand. Uh-huh. Now the Jews' Feast of Tabernacles was at hand. Now we know it's the Feast of the Lord, but it understand it was given unto the Jews. Just like thou should not kill was given unto the Jews. Does that mean it's not good for everybody else? No, it don't. And why would God give great holy days with, with great meaning for you to do away with and start making stuff up? For you to start taking eggs and, and, and associating them with rabbits, coloring them, and doing stuff like that. Or taking trees and putting them in your house and putting uh, and, and stuff around that. Why would the Lord say that's okay when he gave us uh, such great feast days that point to something so much better, especially our salvation, our reward? That don't make any sense. Jump down to verse 14 and let's see what happened. Did you finish that, brother? I finished verse 2. Go ahead. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. Now what did Jesus do in the middle of the feast? Because the feast was for seven days, right? 
Right. He went in the temple and did what? He, he taught. taught. Well, how could you supposed to have a holy convocation? And you're supposed to not only feast on the word of God, on the um on the physical food that week, but also the word of God that week as well. And Jesus did exactly that. He went and taught during those days, meaning right. Jesus kept these feast days. Go ahead. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Mm hmm all right, you finish that up? Yes, sir. All right, let's go a little bit further. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 14. Now, I'm going to show you, even past our time, the Lord going to establish that everybody, all the sons of Adam, all the creation, going to have to keep this Feast of Tabernacles. Because some people are going to say, well, you know, brother, that said it was a feast for the Jews. Well, look something in Zechariah that has not been fulfilled yet when the Lord says everybody's going to keep these feast days. But it's important that we not only celebrate these days, but understand why we're celebrating them. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16, when you get there, go ahead. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Now I said everyone that came up against Jerusalem. Now this is after Armageddon. This is after the return of Jesus. Yeah. This is after Jesus already set up shop in Jerusalem. Right. And he's saying that, look, the families that survived that terrible um, situation, that terrible time in man's um, career, I guess, they're going to have to come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Yes, and what's going to happen if they don't? Verse 17. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. So if you don't show up to worship the Lord like he wanted to be worshipped, you're not going to get any rain. And what do ra no rain mean? No food. No food. No water. That's right. That will be the punishment. So obviously you can't worship God how you want to worship, can you? No. No, not according to this. Verse 18. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not that have no rain, there shall be the plague. Wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh -huh. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So uh, it's still good unto this day. That's right. Jesus did it, and if we're going to be Bible Christians, or we're going to be Christ-like, then we should do the same thing. Yes, sir. So let's go a little bit further. Let's go to Colossians chapter 2, because you're going to get some flack. You're going to get some flack from other Christians who don't understand this just yet. Yep. You're going to get a lot of flack. And this was, even the, the Gentiles who kept this in Colossians was trying to keep the feast days. And they got flack from those who they used to be around that don't do it. Sure. But Paul sent a letter in, of encouragement. Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. When you get there, go ahead. Let no man therefore judge you in meat mm -hmm. or in drink uh -huh. or in respect of a holy day uh -huh. or of the new moon uh -huh. or of the Sabbath day. Now, question. Traditional Christianity, they don't, they don't do anything about a new moon. Nope. Don't know nothing of it. Don't know nothing of a new moon. Or a holy day. They got the holiday holidays, but a holy day. What is a holy day? It's a day that God esteemed as holy. Amen. That God has sanctified. Yes, sir. Everything else is just something man came up yep. with. Or the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is completely done away with. Yep. So we know that, the, that Paul was talking to the Colossians about worshiping how the Lord had it set up but with Moses and those who follow Christ. He said, look, don't let no man judge you. Do what you know is right according to the Holy Scripture as far as what you can read. Verse 17, he's going to tell you that these are about the feast days because the feast days are a shadow of things to come. And that's what we're going to deal with today. What the end gathering is talking about. 17. Which are a shadow of things to come, mm -hmm. but the body is of Christ. Now, these feast days are a shadow of things to come. Right. So let's find out what is this feast day a shadow of, of coming to, supposed to come to pass? What the Lord is trying to tell us by having us come together and celebrate this feast day at the end of the year. After we brought in everything. Let's see. First, um, let's go to Luke chapter 21. Because we everybody knows that the children of Israel got thrown in captivity. They've been scattered all over the world. In 70 AD, when Roman Emperor Titus sacked Jerusalem, the children of Israel, they went to captivity. They haven't been back since. Or even before then, the first ten tribes in Assyria, you can read 2 Kings chapter 17, Assyria took the ten tribes into captivity, and they haven't been back since. Right. But guess what? The Lord going to gather them back. But not only them, he going to gather up everybody that want to follow them back. 
And that's going to be the ultimate end gathering. He's going to do it at the end. Colossians, I mean, Luke chapter 21, and read verse 20. When you get there, go ahead. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Uh -huh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountain, mm -hmm. and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, mm -hmm. and let not them that are in the countries enter therein. Right. So we know that this part happened in 70 AD, and the children of Israel went into captivity. Jump down to verse 24. How long is this captivity supposed to last? When the Lord is going to gather his people back? It, believe, and I'm going to tell you, it's not in 1948. Verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, uh -huh. and shall be led away captive in all nations. Uh -huh. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. All right, so until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled, Israel's going to be in captivity. And let's see when that time, let's see when we can see when that time is going to be up. Verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, uh -huh. and upon the earth distress of nations, mm -hmm. with perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring. All right. Now, when is that going to take place? At Christ's second coming, is it not? That's right. That hasn't happened yet. Verse 26. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Mm -hmm. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Has this happened yet, brother? No, sir. So this is even past our time, right? That's right. So the children of Israel and God's people still going to be in captivity until this point. Go ahead, 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. So his people, at this time, his people can look up and understand that this is over. That's right. All the fighting we were doing, all the, the struggling we was doing to try to worship the true and living God going to come to an end. All of Israel who was thrown into captivity, they're going to be gathered at this point. Yep. When it's going to take place? At the second coming of Christ. Now, this is why we celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles, because no, it's pointing unto this. Jump. Uh, let's go a little bit first. Go to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. And we're going to start reading at verse 29. Matthew chapter 24. And let's get a time frame for when this is going to take place. Matthew 24 and 29. When you get there, go ahead. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. So when is this going to happen? After, after tribulation. tribulation. Not before, but after tribulation right. is when Jesus is going to make his second coming. Verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Uh huh. 31. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. Uh -huh. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. From one end of heaven to the other. Now we're starting to get into the end gathering. Right. This is what the feast is talking about. When the Lord going to gather the children of Israel, gather his elect, gather his people from the four winds of heaven at the sound of the seventh trumpet. This is why we celebrate the feast of tabernacles, the feast of end gathering. Let's go a little bit further. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 45. Let's see who is elect is. Isaiah 45, we're going to read one verse. Isaiah 45, and we're going to read one verse. Isaiah 45 and verse 4. Brother, when you get there, go ahead. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect, mm -hmm. I have even called thee by thy name. Mm -hmm. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. All right, so Israel is elect. So this is him gathering his people. But when he's going to gather his people... Immediately after tribulation, right. when he sent that angel to blow that trumpet, he don't gather the elect with Israel, then he'll gather also the spiritual elect as well who um, brought themselves under the banner of Israel, like Paul talks about. All this is going to happen at the seventh trump. This is why we celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of Ingathering, because it's a shadow of a great thing to come. Let's go to Joel chapter 3. Joel chapter 3. And we're going to start at verse 1. Brother, when you get there, go ahead. For behold, in those days and in that time, 
When I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. He said, I'm going to bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. Let's see what's going to happen. Let's see the time frame. Verse 2. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Uh -huh. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel. Uh -huh. Whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Uh -huh. So that's exactly what he's going to do. But when he's going to do that? At the seven trumps. Yes, sir. Because... He said, they have scattered, we've been scattered all over the world. But he's going to gather us at the end. Let's go a little bit further. Let's go a little bit further. You know what? Jump down to verse 12, um, verse 11. Let's jump down to verse 11. Because we have mentioned in Zechariah chapter 14 when the nations that came up against um, the Lord. Let's see what the Lord talk about that. Verse 11, when you get there, go ahead. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, uh -huh. and gather yourselves together round about. And heathen talking about the nations, go ahead. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Mm -hmm. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, mm -hmm. for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. And that's what he was talking about when he said those that came against the Lord, those that are left that came up against the Lord. During this time. All right, let's get back to the um, regular uh, lesson. Let's go a little bit further. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11. And we're going to start in verse 11. Isaiah 11 and verse 11, brother, when you get there, go ahead. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time. To recover the remnant of his people. When was the first time that he covered the remnant of his people? Out of Egypt. But the second time is when immediately after tribulation. So this hasn't happened yet. Go ahead. Which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. Uh -huh. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. And what's the four corners of the earth? North, west, east, and south. Right. What's the four winds of heaven, like it said in Matthew 24? North, west, east, and south. But when does this happen? Immediately after yeah, tribulation. tribulation. And that's why we celebrate the Feast of End Gathering. Sure. The whole world is going to benefit from this. Yeah. Verse 13. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. All right, jump down to verse 15 and go ahead. And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea, uh -huh. and with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river, mm -hmm. and shall smite it in the seven streams, mm -hmm. and make men go over dry shot. Uh -huh. And there shall be an highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. See, he even comparing it to that time. That's how big and the grand scale is going to be. And believe me, this hasn't happened yet. But that's why we celebrate this feast day. This is this, this is what this feast day is pointing to. Let's go a little bit further. Let's go to um, St. John chapter 10. St. John chapter 10, because in the last few verses, we kept hearing about Judah, Ephraim, and Israel, my elect. I'm gathering them, but the Lord's going to gather others as well. Because remember, when they came out of the land of Egypt, they came out of a mixed multitude. It's not all about Israel. It's about God's flock. It's about all the sons of Adam. Adam. But remember, the Jew first, then the Gentile. And, Lord, and Jesus himself is going to tell us that. St. John chapter 10, verse 14. When you get there, go ahead. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep, uh -huh. and am known of mine. Uh -huh. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And that's what he do. He lay out his life for his sheep. Go ahead. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, mm -hmm. them also I must bring. So he said, other sheep he have, which are not of this fold. Talking about... The other nations. We know the sheep is Israel. Because Jesus said I only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But that don't mean he's not bringing everybody else in. Just an order. The Jew first, then the Gentile. And he's letting Israel know here right now. Don't get too beside yourself. Yeah, you know my voice. But guess what? I'm going to gather others who are not of my flock. Right? Go ahead. And they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. And guess what? At the end, everybody's going to keep the Feast of Tabernacles or else. And this is why we keep this feast, because we know the bigger picture and what this feast they point to. You finish that, brother? Verse 16. Go yes. ahead. 
Therefore doth my father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. Uh -huh. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. Mm -hmm. This commandment have I received of my father. All right, let's go a little bit further. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 56. So Jesus himself said, look, there's other sheep I'm going to bring unto this fold. But if that's just a New Testament thing, uh-huh, go to Isaiah 56. Isaiah 56, and we're going to start at verse 6. Brother, when you get there, go ahead. Also the sons of the stranger that joined themselves to the Lord. What's a stranger? A non-Israelite. That's right. Also the sons of the stranger that joined themselves to the Lord to what? To serve him mm -hmm. and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it mm -hmm. and taketh hold of my covenant. Uh-huh. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain uh -huh. and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Uh -huh. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar. Uh -huh. For mine house shall be called the house of prayer for all people. And that's what it's going to be. That's going to be the end gathering. Verse 8. The Lord God which gathereth the outcast of Israel uh -huh. saith, Go ahead. Yet will I gather others to him beside those that are gathered unto him. That's why we celebrate this face of end gathering. This is what it's all about. Zechariah chapter 8. And even Zechariah is talking about this. When the Lord is gathering the children of Israel, guess what? They're going to come out of captivity from all over the world. They're coming out with a mixed multitude as well. Zechariah chapter 8, um, eight verse 20. When you get there, brother, go ahead. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. It shall yet come to pass that there shall come people and the inhabitants of many cities. Uh -huh. And the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go speedily to pray before the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I will go also. Now, this is once again. This is after tribulation. Yeah. This is after the Lord making second coming. These are the ones who are left over that came up against Jerusalem to fight the Lord. Go ahead. Yea, many people are, and strong nations shall come up to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. Uh -huh. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. And see how the Lord is gathering everybody? One Lord, one faith, one baptism for all the sons of Adam. Yes, sir. This is the end gathering that we're celebrating on, on this feast day. That's right. Now, let's go to Zechariah chapter 14. We're going to wrap it up here at verse 16. We read this earlier, but we're going to read it all over again to show that even after Jesus make his return, even after he set it up in Jerusalem, that we're going to be keeping this Feast of Tabernacles or Feast of End Gathering. Zechariah 14 and verse 16, and this be it. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which come against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And that's the Feast of Tabernacles and End Gathering. I hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name.